morning, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. And because he has been so merciful and so gracious to us, we will be glad and rejoice in this day. Hallelujah. Another Sunday morning that God has shown us grace and mercy. Thank God for that. Welcome to all of you who are in the sanctuary, to those who are, have dialed in, and to those on YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tabernacle of Praise, where I know you will be blessed today. Our order of service will be as follows. Deacon Coma will come with exhortation and prayer for our sick and shut in. Following Deacon Coleman, our choir will come and render a number. And after that, you will hear our own Pastor Nathaniel. God bless you. Come on up, Deacon. Right. Glory, glory. We woke up, y'all. We woke up. We woke up. Yeah, we woke up. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus, he's been good, y'all, right? He's been real good, right? Real good. Hey, so I hope I can encourage y'all today. So First Lady came here about two months ago, right? And uh, she inspired me to get out of my comfort zone, okay? I appreciate you that. Appreciate you that. So, hey, y'all, we would be in the back in the room, right, and uh, it would get a little unorganized. Somebody wouldn't come right, uh, come up, come uh, do the exhortation, and the uh, pastor would say, hey, who want to do it? And uh, anybody knows me, I love to jump up to the occasion. But in this instance, I couldn't do it because I wasn't ready. I, I, was, I was fearful of it. So, uh, uh, like I said, uh, First Lady, uh, once again, I just want to thank you for your words of encouragement. Uh, you helped me get out of my comfort zone. If anyone doesn't know me, I actually speak. I'm a district director of operations, and I speak to a bunch of people, at least 25, 40 people every single day. So this really isn't nothing uncomfortable for me. The thing about it is, is when I get in front of people that know God, know Jesus, sometimes it's like, am I right? Am I wrong? Who's going to critique me? But at the end of the day, it's like, I don't care, right? I do it for him. I do it for him, right? That's what we do it for, right? That's what we do it for. Right? So uh, I'm going to jump right in it. So I want, I want to quickly speak on grace, right? So grace. God's free and unmerited favor towards sinful humanity. So let's look at the word. Let's look at the word unmerited, not adequately earned or deserved, right? So Kendra and I, we were blessed with a beautiful daughter. Thank you, Lord, right? So y'all know her well, Kennedy Joy. Well, Kennedy thinks that if she does good, she will get rewarded. And several of us can probably relate to this. So we are, content, we are continuously telling her, just be good, and if you are good, you will be rewarded, and just give thanks for the reward. So I want to reference a very familiar scripture, Psalms 8511. For the Lord God is our light and protector. He gives us grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who do what is right. So, so Pastor always says this, he will give us the means to walk along his paths, but we must do the walking. When we obey him, he will not hold anything back that will help us serve him. Yeah. All right, so I heard Tony Evans, Tony Evans tell this story. So Billy Graham, he was speeding, right? And uh, he, he got a fine. And he was actually fined $100. So he went to the judge, he went to the court, right? And the, George, the judge, he heard this, he heard this, um, he heard, he heard this, uh, his, his voice. And he said, oh, that, that voice sounds very, very familiar. So the judge looked up, he said, oh my goodness, I got Billy Graham in my courtroom. And he said, I can't find Billy Graham. I can't find him. So, but Billy Graham said, no, no, no. I did the crime. I'm going to pay it. So the judge said, no, I'm going to waive it, $100. And the judge said, you know, son, he looked at him and said, Billy Graham, can I take you out for a steak dinner also? Wow. So I can tell you guys this. I've never been, a, I've been in court, not too many times, but I've never had a judge tell me, hey, I'm going to pay your fine. <laughs> so. Um, but because of who Billy Graham was, he was took care of. So I'm going to end it real quick. So we have to understand who we are. So Jesus loves us, and there are times when we will, he will give us a ticket, but only because he wants to show us grace. Yeah. Grace, yeah. not adequately earned or deserved. Grace. So let's pray, y'all. So uh, today, dear Lord, we just want to thank you uh, for bringing us to this, uh, this place of worship. 
uh, this place of love, dear Lord. There's a lot of people today that couldn't couldn't make it, but they wanted to make it, dear Lord. Yes. There's a lot of people that wanted to get up today, but they couldn't make they couldn't get up today, today yes. Lord. Yes. So we're just grateful today, dear Lord, that you woke us up. You gave us another opportunity to serve you and give you a, 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 a unloving uh, testimony of who you are, dear Lord. We also want to lift up the uh, people on the prayer list, Beverly Alexander, Gloria Brooks, Pete Dixon, Eccles and Jones family, Keisha Fully Love, hallelujah for her, Camille McNeil and family, uh, Mother Nate, uh, Mary and Nathaniel's mother, cousin Joyce and family in Kansas City, Candace and Katrina, their family, Morgan Oliver, Jermaine Proctor, Artis Thomas, Judy Webb, and Shirley Williams, dear Lord. Just be with them. Whatever they ask of, they're asking of you, dear Lord, just be with them, dear Lord. We know that you are. You will never leave us. You will never protect, forsake us, dear Lord. You will always protect us. So, dear Lord, Father, we thank you for your everlasting love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Even if you're at home, if you're watching on YouTube, lift up your hands and say thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. If it hadn't been for the Lord who was on our side, if it hadn't been for the Lord who poured out his grace and his mercy upon us, where would we be? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place today. Hallelujah. I got to tell you that um, we had a really good time on Thursday in rehearsal because we talked about the meaning of the song that we're about to uh, sing to you about joy. And we're in the Christmas season, right, where many times people become depressed because they may not be able to give or they may not be able to receive. But we begin to talk about the source of our joy. And even in times like this, we're, we're still dealing with a pandemic. People have pandemic fatigue, so mental health is a big thing right now. But if we as believers can demonstrate the joy that's on the inside, the joy that comes from the Lord, from the only one that can give us the kind of joy that never goes away, if we can focus on that, what a life we would have, what a demonstration of God that we would give to the world on a daily basis. So today we're asking for the Lord to restore in us the joy of our salvation, the joy of knowing and serving a God like you. This joy that I have, it's not the world that gave it to me. It's not my career that gave it to me. It's not anybody else that gave it to me, but it came from the Lord and even in our brokenness, even in our place of suffering and sorrow and grief and confusion, even in that place, we can still have joy. We can still have joy. We just have to open up ourselves to receive it because you know what? God puts his joy down deep in our soul. Yes. And if we can just tap into what he has given us, yes. we'll be all right. Amen. Yes. All right, we're ready. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord God, for the joy that you can only give. Thank you, Lord. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've captured me. And I've got joy instead of mourning. Help me say, I've got true love, I've got true love instead of pain. I've got freedom though. Though you've captured me, I've got joy. And you give me joy. Do you believe it? Down deep in my soul. And you give me joy. In my soul. Thank you, Lord. Down deep. Come on, let's say it again. There's I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though. I've got joy. And 
you give me joy, say. Down deep Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. And you give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Listen. Never been so free, caught in your love for me. Never been more secure in knowing your heart, Lord. Caught in your love for me, oh God. for what you give and what you place down in our soul, oh God. And the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Somebody come on and thank God for his joy. Will you help us see that you give me joy? Down deep. Nobody can disturb this joy because it's down deep in my soul. And we thank you, God. Down deep. You, God, because you are the source of our joy. Come on, shout it out. Down deep in my soul, I'm going to walk around displaying a smile because you give me joy. Down deep in my soul. Down deep. Come on, can we just lift our hands and tell God, Thank you for your joy. Hallelujah. Come on, don't stop praising because I stood up. Come on. Come on, give it to him. Give it to him. He deserves it. Come on, if it's deep in your soul, you can't stop it right there. It's not that easy. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Joy, joy. Jesus, joy. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen, 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 hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah, amen, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, hallelujah, so grateful to see all of you that are here. All of those who have dialed in, those that are viewing online, say good morning to all of you. I'm Pastor Nate, and we're so grateful that all of you have decided to join us today. Amen. Join us for this Holy Ghost party. Amen. Amen. So we can celebrate the joy of the Lord together. Amen. Lift up the name of Jesus together. The word says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm glad I'm in a place I don't have to magnify him all by myself. Amen. I can always get a lot of help. Magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, usually I go places and I have to have to designate cheerleaders. But I got cheerleaders in every section. Cheerleaders here. Cheerleaders here. Cheerleaders here. Cheerleaders here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. So giving all praise. 
honor, glory, and reverence to God Almighty, who is first and foremost in all of our lives. Recognizing all the members of clergy who are here today, all of our deacons, our officers, first lady, and to all of God's people. Amen. Welcome. Welcome to the Tabernacle of Praise. Amen. Let me go ahead and get into this word. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Eternal God, our Father, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Father, we thank you for this privilege to stand behind this sacred desk that I might share uh, the word that you've implanted into my spirit to give it to your people, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, that this word would find fertile soil and produce a bountiful harvest, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So when we leave this place, even more than it was when we came in, we'll be on fire yes. to let the world know the reason for the season. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for everything. You. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, my everything, my all in all. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, give God another hand clap of praise right there. <clears throat> Amen. Solicit your prayers as always as I get into this word. I'm still uh, battling a little of this uh, malady where I get heated up and cough. And you know when I start preaching, I get heated up, so I'm going to cough. <laughs> Amen. So I thank God for the privilege to stand. Amen. Ushers, you can take your seats. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much for your service. Well, the holiday season is in full effect already. Full effect, and you can tell because everywhere you go, everywhere you look, Christmas decorations and Christmas sales and Christmas cards and Christmas emails and Christmas texts and even company Christmas gathering, both in person and virtual. Even with all of the distressing and depressing gloom of doom, Omicron virus variant news trying to dampen everybody's spirit, most people in both the secular and the spiritual arena are locked into the celebratory mindset that accompanies this festive holiday season. Of course, for us as believers, we understand that this season is not just about partying and getting gifts. Right. Amen. We recognize that we have already received the greatest gift that will ever be given and the greatest gift that will ever be received. Amen. Amen. When we receive the gift of salvation because of the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary. So we have a Holy Ghost party every time we get together just to celebrate the goodness of Jesus. So in the midst of all the hoopla that we encounter in the secular arena, as God's ambassadors, we must let the world know that Jesus is still the reason for the season. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, like, like many of you, year after year, I receive uh, several holiday cards with saying like Merry Christmas and, and Happy New Year. Y'all get those? We received some this past week. But after the holiday season is over, nobody sends me nothing about being merry or happy. <laughs> nothing. I, I don't get nothing from anybody. Okay. Amen. Now, now, who else besides me would like to be merry and happy for longer than just the holiday yeah. season? Yeah. <coughs> well, you're in the right place. Because I'm going to share with you what I hope will be an uplifting word in a mini-series under the central theme of how to be merry and happy all year. Yeah. Is that all right? All right, all right, we're going to kick off part one today. Stand with me as we read our foundational text from the Amplified Bible. Proverbs 3, 13 through 14. I think I might start sending these out to the ones uh, that's called in so y'all so they'll be able to look along with us. You're in the sanctuary where you have the benefit of looking at the monitor. So y'all who listen online, expect a gift next week. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3. Verses 13 and 14 says, happy, blessed, fortunate, enviable is the man, the woman, the person who finds skillful and godly wisdom. And the man who gets, wisdom, gets understanding, drawing it forth from God's word and life experiences, flowing into verse 14. For the gaining of it is better than the gaining of silver, and the profit is better than fine gold. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God's word for God's people. Now, the purpose of this message 
is to get you in a mindset that you know you ought to be merry and happy and enjoying the blessings of God all year long. All year long and not just during the holiday season. You know, but generally when we think about blessing, we, we think about financial. We think about material stuff. When actually the blessing of the Lord is a spiritual empowerment that enables us to prosper in life. Amen? <coughs> Many believers, like I once did, they call the manifestation of what we see the blessing, like cars and clothes and homes and dream jobs and promotions. But in essence, what you see physically is the result of the blessing. It is the blessing of the Lord that causes, or this next scripture that we read, it maketh the believer to increase. Proverbs 10 and 22 says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Glory to God. And he addeth no sorrow to it. This means that I can have money, I can have stuff, and be happy too. Hallelujah. Hey, amen. This, this, this section seemed to have it. Amen. <laughs> listen, listen. <coughs> you shouldn't flaunt your stuff. Let me help you. Don't, don't flaunt your stuff, but neither you, do you have to hide it or talk it down. Amen. How you know you have something, somebody said, oh, that's nice. This old thing, you better quit talking about this old thing. Come on. If you've been blessed, come on now. Because we'll discover in this message that it gives God pleasure to see us prosper. Ooh my God, my God. Can I get a double amen right there? Amen. Hallelujah. This world needs to see the perks of being a believer, being one of the king's kids, so they will want to become a part of the royal family. And God's going to make that happen. You don't have to do anything but let your light shine. And God will make everything else happen. See, when we were adopted into the household of faith, we step into a level of empowerment that enables us to be successful, to overcome adversity, and to be victorious regardless of the challenges we face or any negativity that surrounds us. Hmm, that didn't excite you like I thought it would. <laughs> Maybe this will. The same empowerment is available for every believer. Yeah, 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 we got it now. <coughs> I was a Christian for years before I learned the biblical concept about blessing. Now, don't get me wrong. I was being blessed all the time. I was being blessed all the time. I just didn't comprehend all I needed to know, Robert, about this empowerment. Like I said, I was called in financial and material stuff, the blessing. But the blessing of the Lord is far greater than mere financial and material things. Amen? <coughs> you see, when I exercise my faith, this empowerment allows me to be healed from all manner of sickness and disease. When I exercise my faith, this empowerment enables me to overcome adversity in my finances. When I exercise my faith, this empowerment allows me, I'm talking personal now, to be the best husband, the best father, the best son, the best brother, the best friend, the best preacher, teacher that I can be. So as I deliver this message today, I realize now that every congregation, in every congregation, there are those who are at different levels of biblical knowledge and different levels of spiritual maturity. Included in the persons here in the sanctuary, those who dialed in and those who be viewing this online, there's a group that might be hearing this information for the first time, and they desperately need this word. Then there are those who have heard it, but it didn't sink in the first time, so they need this word. And then there are those who have tried it, they've applied it, they've achieved results, but maybe they reached a plateau and they're ready to go to the next level. Anybody here like that? <coughs> So wherever you happen to be in your spiritual development, you need to listen attentively because there's a rhema word. 
in this message just for you. Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Bless, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. That means we already got it. That's past it. With all the spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. This is saying that if you are saved, saved folk, wave at me, then you're already blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're, in your current situation, you might not feel blessed right now. But it had nothing to do with your feelings. Hallelujah. Just because you're not where you are right now, it doesn't change what the word of God says. The spiritual blessing, the, the blessing is a spiritual impartation in your life. And if you know how to stir it up, if you know how to activate it, then you'll see the manifestation of it. Not need to say you up front. <coughs> Even though I know this is going to be a series, I may have overprepared for this first spiritual meal. For those of you that have ever prepared an entire meal on your own, you know sometimes when you finish cooking, you go, this is way too much food. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Amen. So I suggest that whatever you don't digest now, download the top app uh, or, or go to the YouTube channel so you can uh, watch it later. Amen. Let me tell you what I have prepared for you. I, I actually have only two main points. The first point is the biblical righteousness that secures increase. The biblical righteousness that secures increase. But this main point, Shannon, it, it's got four subpoints. One, the great excuse. Two, the great exchange. Three, the great escape. And four, the great exception. Then my second point is, my second main point is the believer's restrictions to the secured blessing. But this second point has two subpoints: <laughs> the angelic assignment revealed and the angelic assignment restricted. So let's get into point one, the biblical righteousness that secured increase as we discuss what I call subpoint one one, the great excuse. When you talk about possessing the blessing, and sometimes you look at your current situation, it's almost like the children of Israel in, in Numbers uh, chapter 13. They were instructed to go and possess the land, listen, that God told them was already theirs. But when they went there and they saw the brothers of Anak and those some big old brothers, they did a self-assessment of themselves and they said they probably see us as grasshoppers. I've, I've studied this several times and nowhere did it say the brothers of Anak said they looked like grasshoppers. They did a self-assessment of themselves and said we look like grasshoppers. So they were hesitant to go and possess what God had already told them was theirs. Sometimes we don't believe we can increase from where we are because of lacks. L-A-C-K-S. Because of lacks. Lack of confidence. Lack of opportunity. Lack of resources. Lack of preparation. Lack of connection. All of these lacks caused people to have low self-esteem and they disqualified themselves from something that God has destined them to possess. It's not that anybody takes it from you. You don't go and get what God told you is yours. I believe if I poll this, uh, uh, everybody listening and you answered honestly, the poll would reveal that we all have something in our past and maybe even in our present that we are ashamed of and would like to change. These are the things that haunt us when we're trying to release our faith for increase in our lives. So the devil torments our thoughts with guilt of our past trying to get, convince us that you can't have that. You shouldn't even ask God for that. You know what you did. Come on now. So even though we speak something out of our own mouths, our hearts condemn us because of our past sins. And that will continue to torment you if you continue to make excuses and never get a good understanding about righteousness. 1 John 3, verses 20 and 21 says, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, 
if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. So I encourage you, stop making excuses and maintain your confidence in God and his word because as a believer, you qualify for the blessing of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You qualify. <laughs> and that's because of sub-point number two, the great exchange. Now, if you understand these next few minutes, you'll never again let anybody make you feel guilty or talk you what's out of what's yours by divine destiny. It's vitally important that you understand the concept of righteousness because this is what qualifies you from all the blessings you find in the word of God. Amen. In other words, you're going to be pre-qualified. You know how when you go to get something and you're pre-qualified, you walk in there with a swagger. I already, I already got this. You. Hey, you, you know how you stroll in, but I'm getting ready to pre-qualify you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, so you need to pay attention, amen. See, most people confuse righteousness with holiness. But listen to these two simple definitions that should clarify the difference between the two. Righteousness is a spiritual position of being in a right standing with God. Whereas holiness is my behavior or my conduct based upon my righteousness. L let me say that again. Righteousness is a spiritual position of being in a right standing with God. Whereas holiness is my behavior or my conduct based upon my righteousness. See, my righteousness is unflawed. Whereas my holiness is a work in progress. Y'all get that? The righteousness I possess is based on what Jesus did and has nothing to do with, with what I have done or anything I will ever do. During the salvation experience, Ken, a great exchange took place in the life of every believer. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, flowing into verse 21, for he, talking about God, hath made him, talking about Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we, talking about believers, might be, here it is, made Right, the righteous of God in him. Did y'all see the exchange? I gave Jesus my sin, and he gave me his righteousness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then Matthew 6 and 33 said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his... Y'all help me preach this. There. His what? His righteousness, not my righteousness... His righteousness, and as a result of his righteousness, all these things. That means everything I will ever need shall be added. Now listen, listen. <coughs> Can you see that righteousness is intertwined right there in the middle of you having increase in your life? Can you see that? The great exchange and the good news as the go of the gospel is that God made us righteous. We couldn't earn it. Didn't have enough money to buy. Couldn't live right enough to obtain it. But through faith in Christ Jesus, praise the Lord, he exchanged my sin and gave me his righteousness. And this qualifies me for all of the promises for the righteous that I find in the Bible that God has already prepared. So now consider yourself pre -qual. Hallelujah. Give God praise. <laughs> now, if this doesn't make you merry and happy all year long, nothing will. <laughs> because of the great exchange, I'm not qualified for a subpoint 1-3, the great escape. Mm, the great escape. <coughs> Believers are in the world just like everybody else. But we can escape 
what happens to others if we know our covenant rights. Are y'all listening? What happens to worldly folk, and sadly, even to some believers, uh, it doesn't have to happen to everybody because when you know your rights as a child of God, you know you got protection. Listen, I'm not immune from satanic attack. I'm just protected. protected. Why? Because I've had the faith vaccine. <laughs> and, and I get a booster regularly. Hallelujah. This means that I don't have insurance against satanic attack. I have assurance when I get attacked. Amen. See, not insurance, I got assurance. Amen. So listen, I, I'm well aware that the devil's going to attack me. He's going to attack my body. He's going to attack my mind. He's going to attack my peace. He's going to attack anything that he can attack. I just don't get worried in that. I don't lose any sleep because of any of that because I have the blessed assurance. Glory to God. That I am protected because of what God has already done. Hallelujah. 2 Peter 1 and 4. Whereby are given unto us, listen good now, exceeding great and precious promises. Now, now, knowing God made promises to me was good. Amen? Precious promises was better. Great and precious promises was even better. But then he went and added exceeding. Ooh, exceeding. Great and, uh, and glorious promise. How awesome is that? That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having, here it is, escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This means that stuff that happens to the world should not corrupt us because God has already planned for us the great escape. Yeah. Hallelujah. <coughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> we just like a, a bunch of little holy Houdinis <laughs> empowered to escape from stuff. That would entrap the world. Glory to God. See, see, most of you have heard me reference uh, this next text quite often. But I can't talk about escape and leave this passage out. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There has no temptation. And temptation has to do not with just being enticed. It has to do with tests and trials. So there is no temptation, test, or trial taken you. But such is common to man. In other words, somebody has gone through it before you and made it. Come on now. And somebody will go through it before you, after you, and make it. But God, hmm, but God is faithful, hallelujah. Who will not suffer you to be tempted, tested, or tried above that you're able. But, get ready to get your shout on, with the temptation, will also make a way to what? A way to what? Escape that you might be able to bear. Mm, mm, mm. So no matter what happens, no matter what I encounter in life, I have the blessed assurance that God has already prepared for me a way of escape. Escape out of all my troubles. Escape out of all my trials. Escape out of all my tribulations. Escape out of all my problems. Escape out of all my predicaments. No matter what kind of adverse situation I face, I know I can't escape. Somebody shout, if I'm in it, I can win it. If you believe that, give God some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. No matter how tangled or twisted, how perverted or problematic your situation might be, just know this, if you need it, <laughs> God has already prepared <laughs> a way of escape. Because I understand this, Minister Smith, I don't panic when something happens in my life. So I'm not going to have no nervous breakdown. I'm not going to have to take no pills to get me up. I won't have to take no pills to make me go to sleep. And neither should none of you. Listen, when the trials 
temptations and problems come, and let me tell you, they coming. They don't trip. Quit tripping. You got to understand with all of the junk that comes your way, escape come with it. <laughs> so you can deal with anything. So you can be victorious, merry, and happy in every situation. Now, because of the great escape, sub point 1 4, I get the great exception that comes into play. You know what this is? This is the God factor working in your life. Adverse things that have happened and will continue to happen in our lives, but God. Hallelujah. <coughs> I've told you that every time you hear but God, you need to start shouting. You need to start getting excited because things are about to turn around in your favor. I'm in the world just like everybody else. And you know in the world, you know what they say? Shh, stuff happens. Everybody say, nice save, Pastor. Nice save. But God, down through the years, the but God factor has always provided the great exception for his people. Let's examine a few scriptures that support this fact. The next passage is about Jacob talking, talking to his two wives about how their father has mistreated him. But God allowed him to prosper anyhow. Genesis 1, uh, excuse me, Genesis 31 and 7. And your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. Somebody shout, but God. <coughs> the next passage is the culmination of Joseph's story about being betrayed by his brothers and thrown into a pit, rescued from a pit but sold into slavery, then lied on and thrown into prison. Genesis 15 and 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God, hallelujah. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Joseph was an ex-slave. Joseph was an ex-con. But God elevated him to prime minister of Egypt. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shout, but God. <laughs> Psalms 36, 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but God delivers him out of them all. Yes. Listen to me, top partners and friends. You are going to be attacked. Yes. But God yes. will deliver you from every one of your afflictions. Yes. Come on, praise God again. Praise him one more time. Yes. <coughs> you, know, you know, when I examine things in the natural and I look at all of the negative factors that could affect me, the only way I keep on keeping on it's because of the God factor yeah. Yeah. working in my life. So my excuses are over. My making excuses days are over because there has been a great exchange that provided for me a great escape which led me to be eligible for the great exception. Listen, saint, societal stereotype, stereotypes don't apply to us. So once we recognize and internalize who we are and whose we are, we will obliterate all of the negative stereotypes that will once try to be used to measure us. Romans 5, 6 to 8 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yes, peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God, hallelujah, commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Is anybody inspired? Is anybody excited? Is anybody pumped up beside me? <coughs> now, now let me cover my main point number two. The believer's restrictions to the secured blessing. Now, now this won't take very long at all. Y'all all right? Can y'all hang a few more minutes? Amen. I believe you'd be glad you did. I believe you'd be glad you did. Let, let's jump into sub point 2-1. The angelic assignment revealed. 
the angelic assignment revealed. Hebrews 1 and 14. Are not the angels all ministering spirits, servants, sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation? Angels have been sent by God to be servants to those who are heirs of salvation. Just in case you didn't know, that's us. <laughs> Psalms 103, 20 and 21 says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto, what? The voice of his word. The angels are the agents who carry out the word of God. Did you get that? Verse 21 says, Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, still talking about angels, ye ministers of his that do what? His pleasure. That's God's pleasure. Now the angels don't do anything else but what brings God's pleasure. Got it? Did you hear that in Psalm 103, 20 and 21? Well, check out this next passage from Psalms 37 and, and 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. If you fear the Lord, angels have been assigned to you and for you. Mm. Yeah, you, you heard me right. Angels of the Lord are encamped around you all the time, and they're not just there hanging around because they got nothing better to do. They are there to deliver you. Therefore, somebody said therefore, therefore. angels have to be involved in our deliverance. You get that? Psalms 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath, listen closely, pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. If God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, that's us, and the angels do his pleasure, then angels have to be involved in my prosperity. So to get the angels that have been assigned to you busy, all they want to know is what the word of God says about your situation. Now notice it said the voice of his word and not the word of his voice. This means that you can speak it. You can speak it in accordance with the word. You can declare faith-filled words that come out of your own mouth. Then the angels will go to work. Angels will get busy. <coughs> now let's discuss my final subpoint. 2-2. Two -two. The angelic assignment restricted. If angels hearken to the voice of God's word, and they do, and they're waiting to hear the word of God, and that's all they're waiting for, if we don't give them a word, if we don't give them an assignment, they got nothing to do. Are y'all getting this? Angels understand the spiritual law that whatever you have, you, whatever you say is yours. So if you're saying stuff that's not in agreement with the word of God, it restricts the angels from doing anything to help you because they only hearken unto the voice of God's word. So when you lose focus on the word of God and you start singing the woe is me blues, the angels just sit there and say, I don't know why he want to go out like that. If they would just give me a word. My hands are tied if they don't give me a word. When you violate the law of God with the words of your own mouth, the angels can't do anything but wait. Because as God's ambassadors, they will not violate your free will. Did y'all get that? <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. So during your most challenging and trying moments, your angel is just standing there saying, man, if he would just give me a word, if she would just speak an anointed, faith-filled word, I can go to work on this thing. I could change this situation. So to the degree that I understand this, I got to put pressure on my mouth. 
I got to put pressure on my tongue and be very careful about what I say because I do not want to restrict my angelic deliverance. So I consistently give voice to the word of God. For example, regardless what the doctor's report says, I believe what it says in Isaiah 53 and 5 and also 1 Peter 2 and 24 that by his stripes I am healed. When things look a little bit shaky financially, I know my needs will be met. Because Psalm 23 and 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, help me out. I shall not want. There are some material things I'd like to have that's above my current financial means, but if I delight myself in the Lord, according to Psalm 37 and 4, God will even give me some of the desires of my heart. Hallelujah. So when I get a revelation from the word of God about the promises he has already prepared for the righteous, that's us, y'all. I know he's talking about me. Somebody say, I know he's talking about me too. I know God wants the best for me because even when I mess up, he's provided a way for me to get back. 1 John 1 and 9 said, if I confess my sins, God is faithful, hallelujah, and just. He will forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. God wipes my slate clean as if I haven't done anything at all. And he puts me back in line, and y'all know what else, not in the back of the line, amen. And I can enjoy all of the bountiful blessings that he's already prepared for me. I don't know about you, but this is what anchors me. I know that when I ask in faith and according to the word of God, I will have what I say. I know my angel ain't kept around me for my protection, for my deliverance. <coughs> <coughs> you sing a song when I was growing up, all night and all day. The angels keep watching over me. Here's something else I know. Let me close this thing up. Because I have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in my life, I know that one day, hallelujah, I'm going to a place that my heavenly father has already prepared for me so I can be with him forever in perpetual peace. And the same is true for every believer. And this, without a doubt, should keep you merry and happy all year long. Amen? Amen. Come on, come on, give God praise. Give him glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us stand as the invitation to discipleship is extended. Hallelujah. If there is a person or persons that's here in the sanctuary, or one that's listening on, on the line, that won't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It, it doesn't take a, a, a whole lot. It, uh, you don't have to know the pastor. You don't have to know any members here. The word of God is saying, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you believe in your heart that he died and rose from the dead, it says you shall be saved. So if you're here and you want to become a local, remote or honorary member of the Tabernacle Praise Christian Church. Or if, you, if you're here in the sanctuary, you can see who's our representative. So, so it's LaBrenda Hill. See her if, you, if, you wanna, if you're here in the sanctuary. Or if you're on the line and you want to have some questions or you want to become a member of this church, send your contact information to labhill60 at gmail.com. Or you can text your information to 901 319-5588. Amen. God bless. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, if you were blessed by anything today, come on, give God praise. Amen. So it's rendering clashes now coming with our announcements and our appeal for our offering. But God, hmm, make you feel some kind of way. All right, now, our strategic seed for the month of December is $41.01.
and this derives from Psalms 41.1. Those who help the poor succeed will get many blessings. When trouble comes, the Lord will save them. As you look to help the less fortunate, especially during the holiday season, God will bless you for your generosity. Plus, when trouble comes your way, God will deliver you. God always rewards those who are kind and helpful to others. Uh, the Count on Me campaign. Profiles were sent out this, well, November the 3rd. Our local and remote top partners are asked to submit an individual picture and a complete profile for each person in your household. It is our goal to have everyone included in our 2022 meet and greet directory. If you need assistance, please contact First Lady Nate at 901-569-7739 or send an email to firstladynate at gmail.com. We trust you will say, you can count on me to submit my information before December the 6th. That's tomorrow, you all. So everyone should have had this information and get it in to First Lady. In fact, I filled my profile out this morning. There are some out there in the foyer. If you need to pick one up and complete it before you leave here today so that she will have the information needed. And if you need any help with your profile pictures, I'm pretty sure she will assist you all today. Just get that cell phone out and do a selfie. That's all we need. We need to see your pictures, you know, for the ones that may not know who everyone is around here, because everybody ain't like me, see? All right. So now we see here of uh, Dr. Fred and Dr. Valerie Bennett will be our guest speakers Sunday, December the 12th, 2021, during our morning worship service. They will be delivering a message entitled, How We Overcome. Hmm, please mark your calendars to be present. Also, where we at now? Giving options. Okay, we have our, uh-uh, I'm leaving off, wait. Y'all bear with me now, bear with me. I, I'm, I'm just being thankful to be able to be up here and be in service, because I sat for so long back there in the back. So now, you know, I've been asked to be up here, so y'all just bear with me, I'm getting it together. Okay, our power up uh, morning inspirational services and Bible study are at on Wednesday mornings at 5.30 a.m., Bible study, 6.30 p.m. The dial-in numbers for these services are, well, I like to use this 732-434-2919 uh, number. Also, we have backup numbers, and you can look for those in your bulletin or on your phone. And our giving options, okay, we have the top app on our phones we can use. And we also, yeah, that's the little, yeah, the top app, okay, and that's with the little heart at the bottom. And we can use that one, or we can call in, text, top T-O-P, to 833-245-7470. And, oh, we can also just drop it in the mail. If you don't want to use a stamp, you can drive by and put it in the mailbox. Right. And we're going to get it. And then there's also a basket in the back for those that may want to give on today. And I hope I didn't miss anything. But if I did, I charge it to my heart and I did. Yeah. Just real quick, thank you so much, Rennie, for going into such details for me. That means I have to say very little, which is I've received uh, quite a few pictures. I'm still looking for more because I'm still looking in the audience, and I'm 
there's a lot of you that I haven't received a picture of. And like she mentioned, just take that little phone out for you, Liv. Hold up, do your hair like you do. Look in the light and snap it. That's good enough. I'm not looking for America's Next Top Model, okay? I'm looking for my top family, okay? Now, yeah, yeah. So what I want you to do too is don't forget the profiles. A lot of you have been sending in your pictures, but you forgot about the profiles, okay? So get me the profiles. We want to know who each other. We got to do things a little bit different in this virtual environment. And I'm trying to use my brain to try to come up with something thanks to the uh, Count on Me uh, uh, team uh, members, I think with Schaefer and the Proctors, who, who, who brought forth this idea. So come on, let's, let's put it together so we can uh, still be closer in a virtual environment, okay? I'm counting on you guys, okay? I'm counting on you, because you can count on me to get it out, but you gotta give me the pictures and the profile, okay? God bless you. Well, thank you, Reverend Ricky. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. All right, let us turn our minds and hearts to this sacred time. Our scripture for communion will come from Exodus 24, verses 6 through 8, and it reads as follows. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people, and they said, all that Jehovah has spoken will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which Jehovah has made with you concerning all these words. Word of God for his people. Let us bow. Father God, we thank you for this precious moment. We thank you, Lord God, that you've given us a time, Lord God, to reflect on what you've done for us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your precious blood, Lord God. Thank you for giving up your seed in glory, Lord God, for putting on flesh, Lord God, and undergoing such a horrible death for us, Lord God. Thank you for that, Lord God. Search us right now, Lord God. Anything that is not like you, Lord, please forgive us, Lord God. Remove it, Lord God. Renew in us a clean heart and a right mind, Lord God. We thank you. We are forever grateful, Lord God, for your precious and shed blood. Thank you for that blood, Lord. It never loses its power, Lord God. It's still cleansing. It's still healing. still doing what you sent it out to do, Lord God, and we thank you for that. In the precious name of our Christ, we do pray. And God's people said amen and amen. Did everyone get their communion on the way in? Uh, just before we stop, uh, I'm soliciting your prayers. I'm going in for some tests on Tuesday. Just trying to see if we can get to the uh, diagnose what this cough is coming from. So I, I don't want any of you to be alarmed. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I've had uh, both my shots and the booster, <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm good. But I, I solicit your prayers that uh, they can get to the... Uh, you know, find some kind of uh, idea of what's, what's causing this uh, cough. So I, I solicit your prayers. Thank God for all of you. Amen. We, let's read this up together. Let's stand. We thank God and praise God for the awesome privilege that we can be participants in this phase of service. Because we're participants, that means we've taken a step to see Jesus Christ one day in perpetual peace. This represents the bruised body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Eat ye all of it. This cup represents the shed blood shed for the remission of sin. Drink ye all of it. The Bible said when they supped together, they sang a hymn, went out to the Mount of Olives. You're not dismissed. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hallelujah. Praise God.